Reflections, Chapter 2, Lesson 3, The Plains. What to know? How did the geography and climate of the plains affect the American Indians there? Describe how the Plains Indians adapted to their environment. Compare and contrast the ways of life of the people of the plains. Words to know. Lodge, sod, teepee, travoy, council. People, Pawnee, Sioux, Cheyenne, Kiowa, and Blackfoot, Missouri River, Platte River. You are there. The sound of thunder wakes you and you sit up and you quickly sit up. But this is an ordinary thunder. You feel the ground rumbling beneath you. Only then do you realize that the sound you hear is the pounding hooves of thousands of buffalo fleeing your tribe's hunters. You listen as your mother and grandmother talk about the hunt. Soon there will be fresh meat to cook and dry. Grandmother has even promised to make you a new pair of moccasins from part of a buffalo hide. Fast fact, hundreds of years ago, the buffalo herds on the plains were so large that they sometimes blackened the horizon. Wow. And a first section on our Cornell notes, our T chart on the left side, life on the plains. How did the plains Indians use buffalo skins differently from buffalo bones and buffalo horns? And here's a chart we'll refer to. Life on the plains. The Plains Indians lived on the interior plains between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains. Among vast fields of green grasses, they hunted buffalo, or American bison. Buffalo were second only to water as the Plains Indians' most important natural resource. Millions of these animals once roamed the dry prairie land of North America. Imagine a hunting party coming upon a herd of buffalo. Disguised animal skins that cover their shoulders, the hunters slowly sneak up on some of the buffalo. A signal is given. All the hunters yell and the frightened buffalo begin to run. The hunters drive the herd toward a steep cliff. Unable to stop, many of the animals fall over the side and are killed. Buffalo were the main source of food for all the American Indian groups that lived on the plains. The meat could be eaten raw ooh, or cooked, and it could be mixed with fat and berries to make pemmican, a dried meat, meat that could be kept for months. I guess like jerky. <laughs> The buffalo also supplied the Plains Indians with materials to make clothing, tools, utensils, and shelters. The Indians used almost every part of the buffalo. They made blankets, clothing, and moccasins from the skins and carried water in bags made from the stomachs. They twisted the hair into cord and they made needles and other tools from the bones and horns. How did the Plains Indians use buffalo skins differently from buffalo bones and horns? Farmers and Hunters. Set up your Cornell notes. How did types of lodges differ? Let's take a look, a closer look at Plains life. And again, this is two pages. Mm -hmm. 
Plains Life The Plains Indians used their environment to obtain food and to make clothing and shelter. Number one, a travois made by using teepee poles served as a carrier that can be pulled by a dog. Two, the wooden poles used, used to build teepees were valuable because wood was scarce. There's not very many trees on the plains. Number three, in hot weather, teepee flaps could be left open to let in cooling breezes. Four, animal skins were stretched out and softened using a mixture of ashes and fat. And study the illustration for activities that you see in the Plains Indians. Farmers and Hunters. Let's read. Although they all depended on the buffalo for most of their needs, different Plains Indians developed different ways of life. Their life ways depended in part on where they lived. Among the Plains Indians, who lived mostly in the eastern part of the Plains, called the Central Plains, were the Mandan, Pawnee, Wichita, and smaller groups of the Sioux, who called themselves Nakoda. These groups were both hunters and gatherers and farmers. These groups were both hunters and gatherers and farmers. They gathered plants and hunted deer, elk, and buffalo and farmed in the fertile valleys of the Missouri River and the Platte River. They grew mostly beans, corn, squash, and sunflowers, which they sometimes traded for other goods. These Central Plains Indians lived in villages made up of large circular houses called lodges. Each lodge was home to several families, with sometimes as many as 60 people living in one lodge. Each lodge was built of earth over a shallow pit. In the center was a shared fireplace under a hole in the roof for letting out smoke. Families could keep warm in the earth lodge during the cold winters. On the northern prairies, the lodges were covered by sod, a layer of soil held together by the roots of grasses. On the southern prairies, the lodges were covered with grasses or animal skins. About twice a year, the villages emptied as men, women, and children took part in a great buffalo hunt. To reach the grasslands where the buffalo lived, the people walked from their villages in the river valleys, sometimes for several days. A nomadic society. Set up your two column Cornell notes with this on the left, please. Compare and contrast. Why did the Great Plains Indians live as nomads instead of as farmers? Smoke rises from an early morning fire as a Cheyenne woman prepares food. Food is scarce. There's, sorry, wood is scarce. Not much wood. It's in short supply. Where she lives, so for fuel, the woman burns dried buffalo droppings called chips. That's right, buffalo poop fire. She works quickly because her people are preparing to move. 
the Cheyenne lived in the western part of the interior plains, called the Great Plains. They and the other groups who lived there, such as the Kiowa, the Crow, and the Comanche, were nomads who moved from place to place following herds of buffalo. They did not farm in the dry grasslands where they lived. Short grasses had such tough roots that a digging stick could not break the soil. Since the Great Plains Indians had no permanent homes, they built shelters that were easy to move. One such shelter was a cone-shaped tent called a teepee. To build a teepee, wooden poles were set in a circle and tied together at the top. Then the poles were covered with buffalo skins, leaving a hole at the top to let out the smoke from fires. The Great Plains Indians also used their wooden poles to make a kind of carrier called a travoy. A travoy, if you don't pronounce the S, it's a French word there. A travoy, or at least a French spelling, <laughs> a travoy was made of two poles tied together at one end and then fastened to a harness on a dog. And we saw that here. Goods were carried, things to trade, goods were carried on a buffalo skin tied between the poles. So why did the Great Plains Indians live as nomads instead of as farmers? In our next section, Plains Cultures. How were the governments of the Lakota and the Cheyenne? How were the governments of the Lakota and the Cheyenne both alike and different? Plains cultures. Like all American Indians, the Plains Indians had different customs and systems of government. The Lakota people, another branch of the Sioux, were seven nomadic groups, each of which made its own choices. Still, membership in the Lakota group guaranteed that the smaller groups would respect each other's hunting areas and would not fight each other. The Cheyenne governed, governed differently. They were 10 groups that were independent of each other in many ways. However, each group sentenced leaders to meet in a council of chiefs. All the groups of the Cheyenne had to follow the council's decisions. Among the Plains Indians, every person in the group was equal. No one person was born more important than anyone else. Any man could become chief by proving himself a good hunter and a good leader of people. He became chief because his people chose and trusted him. Although they had different ways of governing themselves, many of the Plains Indians shared certain folklore traditions and religious beliefs. Among these was a belief in how they came to be, an origin story. The Blackfoot, for example, believed that they were created by a spirit called Old Man. Old Man also made the animals and decided where they would live. Among the Plains Indians who farmed, corn played an important role. Every year they held ceremonies to harvest and give thanks for the corn harvest. Every year they held ceremonies to celebrate and give thanks for the corn harvest. And here's an artifact about the calendar row. 
Other ceremonies marked the beginning and end of buffalo hunts, the naming of a child, or the beginning of a marriage. During the summer, many Plains Indians performed the sun dance ceremony, which they believed helped keep the buffalo strong. The sun dance also showed the Plains Indians respect for nature. Different Plains groups gathered for the sun dance, which helped build a sense of unity. So how were the governments of the Lakota and the Cheyenne both alike and different? In summary, the Plains Indians lived in a large region that stretched across the middle of North America. The Plains Indians were made up of many different groups. However, different groups lived in similar types of shelters, relied on the same sources of food, and shared certain religious beliefs. And here are questions for review and discussion.